Hello everyone, I'm Sung Jin. I'm Matt Bierman. And I'm Stephen Morin. We are from the University of Wisconsin-Madison. Today, we'll discuss the paper we recently published with JPC Letters, in which we discuss how would you grow, go from growing crystals like this, with huge macroscopic sizes and very well-defined facets, to taking advantage of crystal defects, such as dislocations, to give us small crystals such as these. And I'll discuss how these same concepts can be applied to yield tubes. And eventually, how we might use these structures for something useful. So we've all seen many different shapes of crystals. Crystals grow in a preferred orientation depending on their crystal structure. One of these crystal structures is rock salt. It's named after sodium chloride, table salt. This structure is a very symmetric cubic shape. I'm holding here a chunk of the mineral galena. Galena is made up of lead sulfide. Galena shares the same crystal structure with table salt. So here is the chemical vapor deposition system where we grow many of our materials. Here is a crystal also of galena, except for this one's made up of branching nanowires. Each one of these wires is 100 nanometers across, about 1,000 times smaller than the width of human hair. In the conventional nanowire growth method, the so-called vapor liquid solid growth, or VLS growth, we use a catalyst, usually a metal catalyst, that can drive the crystal growth along one dimension because the interface between the metal catalyst and the nanowire materials you have is a preferred interface to grow crystals. So that will actually keep depositing materials along this interface and elongate the nanowires into one dimension. And that is actually also the same mechanism behind the uh, hyperbranched lead sulfide, lead selenide nanowire structures that we saw earlier, uh, which was really a special case of the uh, VLS growth in which the metal catalysts were generated in situ in a self-catalytic fashion continuously so that we have many level branches growing uh, on top of each other to give you this hyperbranch morphology. The story becomes more interesting for these crystals. Here we still have branching wires but the branches begin to rotate around the trunk in a spiral staircase. This is due to a specific type of defect in the trunk nanowire called a dislocation. Here we see the aspects of the screw dislocation, where the branches wrap around just like the threads of a screw. To understand that concept, we have, under, we have to understand screw dislocation and why it is relevant to crystal growth. In fact, if we think about crystal growth, if we know the solid structures composed of periodic crystal structures, then the most natural way to think about growing crystal is a so-called layer-by-layer growth, as shown in this cartoon here, where you have to put an atom on top of a very perfect crystal facets. Uh, it's actually a lot better to put an atom on the step edge and the kink side of a uh, layered atoms. However, when you finish the new uh, layer, from the beginning to the end, you have to nucleate an additional layer to enable this growth model to happen. And that is actually the reason why it takes a lot more higher supersaturation to grow crystal in this way. All under the normal supersaturation we grow crystal with, uh, the growth rate of layer by layer growth is fairly low. In most of the crystals, they are actually never perfect. You will have defects such as school dislocation. Uh, that will actually give you a step a shared step on the face of crystal, and this step will become the natural place to add atom to. And the best part is actually that when you keep adding atom to that step, what you will do is actually that you're going to make a spiral on top of a crystal. To think of dislocations in nanowires, it's useful to think of a macroscopic object that we're all familiar with, such as this spiral staircase that I'm standing on. Here, we can think of the pole in the middle of the staircase as the dislocation core and the steps that wrap around it as the self-propagating facets or steps where atoms attach in the growth of our nanowires. To expand this analogy further, we can think of the edge of this spiral staircase as being the edge of our nanowire and the vertical height of the staircase as being the length of our nanowire. Under the proper supersaturation conditions, the layer by layer mechanism will not be able to add to the edge of our nanowire or this staircase because there are no steps. And therefore, we'll have anisotropic one-dimensional growth. In that way, you can think of this 
large macroscopic spiral staircase as the same thing as our nanowires. Everyone's seen a spiral staircase like the one we were just climbing. But I'm sure a lot of you have also seen spiral staircases where the core is open. It turns out that dislocations, in addition to being able to drive nanowire growth, can also drive nanotube growth. And the picture is a lot like this slinky. The idea is that whenever you have a dislocation in a nanowire, the strain from that dislocation can eventually become so much that you get a hollow tubular object. This is something that's been observed and reported a lot in the literature, but until our recent work with zinc oxide nanowires and nanotubes, the connection to dislocations had not been recognized. The fundamental understanding we discussed in this paper can be useful for many different things, including, for example, using the complex tree-like nanowire structures that we have shown earlier for solar energy harvesting. Like the way nature does in this tree, they have evolved their shape and morphology to optimize the solar energy harvesting. If you are uh, more interested in this topic, I encourage you to read our perspective article published in Journal of Physical Chemistry Letters.